Yes, people, welcome back to GNA TV and Chelsea Fan TV for another Chelsea news show for you guys and a nice and interesting one for you today. Lavia looking close, Elise looking very close, Caicedo's already training. Lavia, supposedly being told that he will be, um, well, Chelsea have told us, that supposedly Lavia will try and sign Lavia before the West Ham game so that he's available for us in that one. Lots to get into, guys. Lots to talk on before all of that. Ziyech potentially leaving the football club as well. David's been signed as well. Like, there's a lot going on. But we're going to recover everything, go through everything, talk about the midfield that we have supposedly put together now as well with Lavia, Caicedo, Enzo. We've got um, loads of, just loads of stuff, guys. Honestly, loads of bits and bobs to get through today's show and we will be joined by the panel today the panel will be in and we'll be discussing lavia we'll be talking or say we'll be talking about systems we'll be talking about expectations potch what's the expectations now have they changed you know lots of other things to get into as well make sure that you're just smashing them likes guys lots to get into let's cue that intro <laughs> Yes, people, welcome back to GNA TV and Chelsea Fan TV for another Chelsea news show for you guys. And Chelsea are still cooking, guys. Let's be serious. They are still cooking. And it's an amazing sight for us as Chelsea fans for what could be possibly one of the best transfer windows that Chelsea have had in, in a long time. Probably in a long time, guys. I can't even think of when the, the when was the, we, we say was the next greatest window that we ever had. Bar, bar in this one, we all we all thought that the the window that we had where we spent two hundred million was good, but ended up not being that way. Um, just trying to think, maybe it would go as far as like the Conte Mourinho first season when he came back. Oh, sorry, second season. I don't know, but it's all interesting stuff, and. I'm here to obviously go through all the news with you guys as well. 80 people already in here already. Nearly 100 people, actually, of you guys over here already. Smash the likes, guys. Lavia confirmed. We're going to be talking about him today. Lots to get into as well. How excited are you guys to be a Chelsea, Chelsea fan as we speak as well? And why I did take so long, guys, was because, well, it was because of this. And it's worth mentioning before we go on because it deserves a special mention. The England, England women's... Uh, team have managed to make it to the World Cup final again on the back of last time round. And our manager there is absolutely smashing it. And when you look at where she and what she's doing at the moment with the, with the, with the players that we have, and very quality players in England, just beat Australia 3-1, I believe, as well. It's a massive, massive, massive achievement for the, for the um, England ladies. But special mention to Sam Kerr, guys, because, wow, what a striker she is. Can you imagine... If she was in this England team as well, it'd be even worse for everyone. But what a player. Um, and congratulations to England making another World Cup final as well, where they could potentially be going on a back-to-back -back on this. Oh, obviously, the Euros, sorry, and then obviously the World Cup. So they won the Euros and they got the World Cup now. So this is big, man. This is big for the England ladies and good luck to them. I'll be watching it. I thought it was a really good game to watch and I enjoy watching women's football. I think it's very good. Very, very good. Right. Moving away from them. Over 100 of you guys in here already. Lots to get into. Um, as always, I want to say hello to everyone in the chat because that's what I always start by doing. Big up to Leo. How are you? Corey, how are you? Uh, Cameron, how are you, my man? Hope you are well as well. Um, Collins, Cameron. Um, who else have we got here? Uh, RD. I don't know if RD's woke up in the wrong side of bed again. He seems to just come out with waffle. Each and every once in the blue moon. Um, John, what are you saying? Where are the people? We're here, bro. How are you? We've got an Arsenal fan here talking waffle, as they always do, because they live in our shadows, born in our shadows. Um, John Matthews is dealing with that. <laughs> uh, who else have we got here? D Freezy, nice to see you. How are you, my man? Nice to see you. We've also got Shubham here as well from Mauritius. Big up to you. Nice to see you. Nearly 150 of you guys here already. Streamed Elements has a bot running. Big up to him. Matty says England ladies are through. They are. What a game. Congratulations to them as well. Santiago, how are you? FIFA King as well. Jessica, welcome. Gets for, he's in the building. Nice to see you, Jason. Adele. Um, Ali, how are you? 
Digital Arts says London's biggest club in that in what way? I don't know who they're talking to. Chelsea boy, how are you, bro? Nice to see you. Hope you're well. Big up Max in the building. Dexter, how are you as well? Digital Arts, Ashraf is in the building as well. Yes, Moises Caicedo is number 25 as well. And that's where it leads me to with our first little initial topic of today. Moises Caicedo and the shirts, guys. Are you happy that he's taking Gianfranco Zola's, the legend of this football club's number 25, which was signed off, but now seems to be back in play obviously next to Enzo as well. Let me know. Are you guys happy with that? Give me two seconds. I've just got to do so. Be back. Yes, guys. Thank you for being patient. Caicedo, number 25. How does that make you guys feel about that situation? Very weird numbers being given to our players at the moment. Uh, big up. How you doing, Tops? Nice to see you, bro. Nice to see you around. How happy are you, my man? Not seeing you in a while. Um, Andy says, this is his debut goal. Exit in. Exit, exit in. Exciting. What is that? Um, Zola's number. It was Zola's number. Yes. Are we not allowed to buy shirts without the sponsors? Uh, at the moment, yes. So they've given us the opportunity to basically take on these shirts um, without the sponsoring. Uh, we seem to have a bit of a problem. People were saying if if we're going to have a sponsor for West Ham, he's still not been signed off by the Premier League as well. So this is why there's a bit of a, de a delay in, in what's going on at the club at the moment. Um, our best three players on here. Big up Yaya as well. Nice to see you from Libya. Um, big up Chelsea till I die. It's a number as much as Zola is a legend. It is just a number, but I think some people do get very fixated on these numbers, right? Oh, he shouldn't have that number. He shouldn't have this number. Why has he got this number? Blah, blah, blah. You know, it's like, um, exactly. And that's one thing we should be excited for Sunday. Um, we're going to stay on with Kaisei though, because we've had some images of him in training today as well, guys. He is cooking. He is getting ready. And let me tell you a sec now, he will be available for West Ham. And if we don't see the 4-3-3, which some people are expecting to do, and I think it all depends on when we get Lavia sorted. We've been told today he is at Chelsea and doing his mega call. Some uh, reports are saying tonight, so which means he won't be available till tomorrow at the latest and start trading. So he might not, you know, you only have three days. I don't know how fit Lavia is as well, but he might not be available for West Ham or he might be on the bench. We'll have to wait and see. But the one thing I will say, is Moises Caicedo will play next to Enzo Fernandez. He has to play next to Enzo Fernandez in the West Ham game. And I can see us doing a 4-2-3-1, maybe a 4-3-3 in this one as well. So it's going to be interesting. He's he's locking and loaded. He's getting ready. It's exciting times, guys. And it's good to see Caicedo at our club, as we already know as well. Yes, the money is a lot. We know that. But the price tag doesn't mean anything when the quality is shown on the pitch. And providing the quality is shown on the pitch, then we have no issues. We really don't have no issues with that. We're going to talk a little bit later in the show today about how Chelsea may utilise Caicedo, Lavia and Enzo Fernandes. So make sure you stay tuned for that one because that's going to be an interesting um, discussion. Um, we're also going to be talking about Poch and his expectations as well. We'll be discussing that as well. Um Barkley took Lampard's number eight. Why are people going? Exactly. Exactly. They are just a number. And people only look at what we spend, not at our net spend. I think a lot of people don't care about net spend, though. That's the thing. We have fullbacks and centre backs. W. I know we do. We do. We have two teams. If you look at us on paper, we have two. We could lay out two teams with the number of players we have in our squad at the moment. And that's very rare for Chelsea. You know, and it's not just about having the numbers now, it's also having the quality. And something that Chelsea have lacked in the past is having the quality. In positions, we lost Reese James, the levels dropped, right? Now we don't have that problem. We can have Malagusto coming in. We've got Moises Caicedo, we've got Enzo, we've got Lavia. We've got about how many God knows defenders that can come in and cover each other if and not about Chal Trevor Chalabas still at Chelsea. Like, you know, there's so much going on. Kukurea, Chilwell, Matson. You know, there's just so much covering in so many areas. The only area that maybe is going to be improved is when Elise comes in potentially is the attacking area on the right. I think that will be covered from there. But we have uh, a very strong team on paper and also a second team as well, you know. 
Sanchez is 6-5 and we've become the best team in the world. Well, yeah, I think Sanchez is going to be our number one goalie, I think, this season. I think what we need to be prepared for is who we sign next. And I do expect us to sign a goalie. I think that will be the last puzzle after release day, in my opinion. Um, some people say we might get another attacker, which would be interesting, but I really think it should be one more goalie after release day once we do that. Guys, over 200 people here right now. Smash them likes. Let's keep running the likes up. Hit the, hit the thumb for Moises Caicedo. Hit the thumb for Romeo Lavia. If you haven't hit the thumb below me right now, like, what are you doing? What are we doing, guys? What are we doing? Everyone smash it. Everyone share. Everyone share it out as well. And let's get let's get talking about our great football club. We're the first... We're that big other fans come to Chelsea fan channel, not at their own. I know. I find it funny, Bonnie, to be honest. Uh, Enzo Lavia Casado set for the next Deco sensation now. The next time we need to go in for a striker. Yes, that is definitely an error we need, need to look into or address at later stages. Talking about a striker, we have confirmed a, another young striker at the football club, which came in today uh, in the name of David Washington, who has signed a contract and completed medicals at his new club, Chelsea. Official statement soon as the deal finally signed with Santos for 2005 striker to join on a 16 million euro plus 4 million deal. Here we go, confirmed. I've not watched enough of the guy. I don't really understand how talented he really is. There must be something there in it, in my opinion. This talks about Chelsea deciding what they're going to do with him, whether they're going to hang him around, maybe because of the striking options, you know, on the bench and whatever coming on. Potentially, depends on how good he is, or send him off to Strasbourg, which which could happen. A lot of our players will be going to Strasbourg. A lot of them players will be given opportunities to play in what we call an experienced league in the French league as well. So it's um it's definitely an opportunity for these young lads to if they're not going to make it in for the first season two three to potentially go gain experience elsewhere, growing character, learn the game, be more ready to maybe challenge in pre-seasons, because I do believe each pre-season that we have, these guys will be given the opportunities. And if these guys come back from a very good season, from wherever they've been on loan, whether it's Strasbourg, whatever, and they perform when given the opportunities at the club, and we're seeing it already with Ian Matson, who looks like he's going to be staying with Chelsea. You know, there's a couple others in there still that may still go on loan. But Santos, for example, you know, um, there's always a door open. Chelsea do need a striker. That is true, along with Jackson. We have to wait and see what will happen at a later stage with him. Dodger's tweet. Let's have a look at Dodger's tweet. Dodger! I need to get him on at some point, to be fair. Dodger. What's Dodger Sam? Let's have a look. Dodger. What are you saying, Dodger? Okay. I mean, that's no real shock there, is it, really? Kepa's not here anyway, but I will share it with you guys. And it's news about Sanchez taking, basically, Sanchez is taking Kepa's number. Robert Sanchez to take Kepa, Kepa's number one shirt this season, which basically says he's the number one this season. That's That's it, you know? He's the number one this season. We're going to have to see how he goes. I'm not solving him. I'm not saying he's the answer to our goalkeeping problems. I don't know is the answer to it. But what I will say is I think that we need to give him the opportunity to show us what he can do. And one game where against Liverpool where, yeah, it was a little bit shady in certain parts, but also I was quite happy with the way he commands his box, etc. You know, maybe a little bit of confidence, a little bit more of routine, being played regularly. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we find a goalie in him. And there was a good goalie in him at Brian. He fell out with the Zerbi. He had a very good relationship with the goalkeeping coach who's now at Chelsea as well. So there's a good opportunity that Robert Sanchez finds form. And hopefully he does, but for our sakes, obviously. If he don't, and we start seeing the same issues that we had when Wikepa was here, inconsistency, then obviously we're going to have to start looking for a goalie, aren't we? Um, whether we get another goalie in is going to be a question mark. But... He's going to be given the opportunity to end of, and I think we need to be patient with that one, in my opinion. Not a handball, it is on each. What are you talking about? Um, Elise Lavia and Kai Sado, Tob, Tobbs, uh, Liverpool, and 
Tobbs, S, Liverpool, and what are you guys talking about? Samuel's in the building. Big up Samuel, was a Liverpool fan. Samuel, it's actually interesting that you're here, bro. Um, what are your thoughts as a Liverpool fan in the chat about the signings that Chelsea have made on Lavia and Caicedo? I'd like to know here from a Liverpool, fans, a Liverpool fan's perspective on that. So let me know what your thoughts are in the chat, bro. I've had one season to prove it. I know, go get mine. On it. Exactly, Ashra. Yes, exactly. Exactly that. A good news on Ziyech leaving. And that's the next part that we're going to from that because Hakim Ziyech, guys, Finally, looks like he's going to be leaving this football club. And I don't know about you guys, but I am so excited for this. Like, I actually thought he was inevitable. I thought he was never going to be sold. I thought it was going to always be issues. But Fabrizio Romano has come out and said that we've reached a verbal agreement with Galatasaray for Hakim Ziyech. The deal is subject to further details and also a medical test. As Chelsea are careful after twists with PSG and Al Nassar. Obviously, he had a failed medical at PSG. Sorry, at Al Nassar. And at PSG... The documentation that Chelsea were obviously sent across was a bit too late, so he missed the opportunity from joining there. But we do need to get rid of him. He's not got a number. He's not even got a kit number. He's not involved in our plans moving forward. He doesn't suit what we're trying to do. I don't even think Pochettino is even entertaining the idea of him being at this football club anymore. He has been a flop. End of. I have no more words to say about Hakim Ziyech. He is a big letdown, in my opinion, because in, in all of the players that we signed and brought across, he was one of them that was in his prime, supposedly, on the back of playing so well for Ajax, lighting up the Champions League, you know, doing well in their league as well. It's all of a sudden now, <clears throat> he comes to Chelsea and we don't see it. And, you know, he just just didn't suit our league. This is the truth. He just did not suit what we were trying to do. And I'm glad that he's gone. In all fairness, I'm glad that he's gone. I don't know why, but I can't seem to see. Let me just check something. Oh, yeah, I can. Not a fan of Brazilians with American names. <laughs> Couch. <laughs> Guys, nearly over 300 of you here, 16 minutes in. Keep smashing them likes. Share it. Smash the likes. It brings it through the algorithm of YouTube. Allows new people to come and subscribe to this beautiful channel, both GNA TV and Chelsea Fans TV. And if you don't follow my personal channel, guys, go and check it out. It's in my name here. Right there. GNA TV. So give me a follow there. Give me a follow. Um, and yeah, you'll see me obviously on here, but there might be times where I can't be on Chelsea Fan TV, but I'll be live on my channel. You just might want to come over and watch it in, in that period. So make sure you give me a follow because we're on the road to 10k subscribers there. So it'd be really nice to try and see if we can close that gap now, guys. Enzo looks good. He does. He's just quality. Samuel says, honestly, the club has drained me. We have no direction starting from the top. As at this point, I want it. I want Klopp to walk because it's ruined his legacy. Um, you definitely have problems, and we obviously know about your ownership. A lot of Liverpool fans are not happy with FFG and what they're doing, and I just think tactically they got it wrong, mate. That you know they should have stacked with Lavia. You know you have done for the last two months. You switched, you moved the goalposts, decided to join the Caicedo situation, which made no sense because we'd had him or had been speaking to him for three months. Yeah, all right, we dropped a forty-eight million offer, but it was never near the fifty million that they were, they were always going to turn it away anyway. So I don't really get the tactics of. Liverpool and what they were trying to do at that time, if you know what I mean. So, yeah, we move away from Hakim Ziyech, guys, and we now move on to more interesting stuff. Olise to Chelsea. What do we know? Well, supposedly Sky Sports are saying that we're finalising the details of an agreement for Michael Olise to Chelsea. Now, another top quality young individual. Yes, he's injured. He won't be available till the end of September, we're being told, even though he is training, he's running again, etc., from a big injury that he had. There is a clause in his um, contract that allows us to buy him for 35 million, we're being told, which Crystal, Phillip, Crystal Palace fans are putting their hair out. Some even rival fans are putting their hair out because they feel that he's worth a lot more than what Chelsea are looking to buy him at. But my question to you guys in the chat is how do you feel about this deal? Are you, are you sold on the fact that Elise is good enough to join this club? Do you think he offers something that suits what we're doing system-wise? And I keep talking about system profile benefits. And what we've done this season so far, I think that a lot of the players that we've brought in benefit the system that Poch wants to do and the profile specifically on most of the players that we brought in are importantly been matched well, statistically and what they do on the pitch as well. And this is why I think Pochettino has... And we're going to talk about Poch in a bit because I do want to get into him slightly before we get the panel in and then we'll talk about it overall. But, you know, this is why I think the expectations specifically may change slightly for him 
as well. Guys, nearly 350 of you here. Big love to all of you. Get both Kudus and Alise. Look, I'd look, in my opinion, if I had to choose between Kudus and Alise, I should do a poll on this. I would probably choose Kudus. My opinion. Not to say that Alise is a bad player. I just think they're very different players. I think Kudus gives you more versatility. I think Kudus can play across the, the you know, across the three behind the striker. I think Kudus also contributes to something that we're probably going to be lacking a little bit on again, which is goals. Goals. We need goals. And when you look at Elise, he doesn't really have the goals, even though I think you look at where he's played, maybe that might be a factor in Palace. But what he does have is something that is amazingly impressive, which is double digits in assists. I think it's only Saka that's actually managed to be able to... Um, I was just reading something funny. Who have actually managed to match Elise's assist levels. And I do think Elise brings something that we don't have. But if we get both, why not? I'd, yeah, I'd entertain it. If we can continue spending the way we are, then we'll do it. But I'm just thinking about where we are with that in Kunku, where we're going to get goals from. But doesn't mean I don't like the other one. Just remember that. I like both. I just, my preference would be Kudus, in my opinion. Uh, should look forward to the development this season. 100%, Jeremy. Good. We will win the Premier League with him, is what John's saying. Uh, Kudus, for me personally, though, he's an, another 10, 15 mil. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree. Elise is incredible at speed and creation is what we've got here as well. Yeah, look, I'm, look, I'm not a knocking Elise. I'm just going on if I had to choose between the two, what I would do. Obviously, Kudus is available as well. You know, Elise won't be available to the end of September, which... All right, so not far, but, you know, there's a lot of games in between that. Big games as well. Madwaki struggling to get back into fitness. He's not really been playing games, and he would have been important right now for us. And I think he would have been playing, to be fair. Um, or maybe playing more, or Sterling having less minutes, shall we say. Chelsea insists their approach for Elise has been above board following reports that Palace are unhappy over the concerns the winger may have been tapped up. That makes no sense to me. I do think that this is conflicting reports. And why I wanted to bring this up is because... He has a buyout clause. How are we tapping a player when a player has a buyout clause or a release clause in his in his contract? That makes no sense. Why would Palace be upset with us activating the buyout or release clause, which allows us to negotiate with the player? That makes no sense to me. So I'm not too sure how serious this is. On top of that, they're meant to be getting Lewis Hall from us which has supposedly been delayed via Nizarki and Seller as well. So all you're going to do by making a formal complaint about whatever it is that they think is just de delaying the fact that Elise and Lewis Hall can't go to where they need to go. And I'm pretty sure that the, the player camps are not going to be happy with that. So I don't really see anything coming from this. I'd be quite shocked if it does. But I don't see anything coming from the idea that, that Palace are annoyed by Chelsea in the way they're doing things. Chelsea have really come out and said, They've done things by the books. Things have been done correctly. We don't feel like we've done anything wrong here. So, at the end of the day, it is what it is. They're annoying when Lise works in Amen nowadays, but they're screwed. Uh, yeah, potentially. Um, no, not for me, Tim. I think we just got to rip his contract up and let him go. I don't want to see him near my club anymore. Um, yeah, guys. Keep tapping the screens if you can as well. I'd massively appreciate it. Over 200, nearly 250 people on Chelsea Fan TV, but only 60 likes, guys. That should be well over 100 likes right now. How quickly can we get that thumb up? Smash the like for Levia. Smash the like for Caicedo. Smash the like for Enzo. If you like them three players and the idea of them being in a, a midfield three, hit the likes now. Hit the likes now. I want to see the thumbs go up, guys. Hit the thumbs. On both sides, GNA TV as well. GNA TV is impressive today. 50, 57 likes over there as well, guys. But there is over 115 of you guys there as well. So we should be touching close to 100 likes over there, guys. Let's see between GNA TV with the numbers we got there and Chelsea Fan TV who can make it to 100 likes first. I really want to see who's got who can do it, guys. So if you haven't hit the likes, guys, hit the thumb. Hit that thumb now. Let's see how quickly that this can move, guys. Let's see how quickly this can move. Um, yeah, so that's that. All these rivals' tears makes me so happy, Ed. <laughs> Tell me about Ed, man. It's, I find it quite funny, to be honest. Jim, do you think there is any way Lukaku could stay at Chelsea and get back in the team? Um, my personal opinion, no. I don't think he suits anything in what we're trying to do here. I think with Lukaku, you have to build around him. 
And I'm putting aside all the crap that we know that he brings with himself in terms of his own ways. But in terms of the football ability, in terms of what he offers as a player, for me, no. I don't think we should be entertaining the fact of Romelu Lukaku and what he can do. Um, I don't think he'd like the idea of just holding bench. I don't think Chelsea fans would like the idea of him being there. I don't actually think he wants to be there with us anyway. Anyway, so I would not bother, in my opinion. In regards to Adoregui, I believe Fati's building out the fitness. Yeah, yeah, of course, and I get that. And I hope he comes back, you know, sharp and ready to go, you know. Um, good morning, Nyak. How, to, how you doing, bro? Nice to see you. Big up to you. We should be trying to recoup some funds now. I expect at least a hundred million to be made. So what do you mean? We've sold nearly two hundred million. I think people forget we've sold nearly two hundred millions worth of players. Just under actually. Big up tech man. <laughs> I know, no, it's not. <laughs> I've got to do it, guys. I don't like having to tell you to hit the likes and subscribe and all that. But yeah, you know, if when the likes are that low, I have to bring it up because we need to. Obviously, if you're here sitting here watching, and I appreciate you all being here. You know that I do. I just, you know, it does help if guys can just at least tap the likes and get this over 100, guys. I really appreciate it. We're still not over 100 likes at the moment as well. But let's move. Let's move. Uh, Fabrizio Romano has came out with this comment here as well. Uh, via Simon, well, Simon Phillips is saying what Fabrizio Romano said here. And it goes to say it's been an, a, a busy summer for Chelsea, but they are not done yet. But are they done yet? Sorry. After Lavia and Elise, I can't say for sure right now. But Chelsea signings never say never exactly. And I think this is the big thing. I feel, you know, we'll probably get them two done. Do we get another attacker? Are we going to get a goalkeeper? I think we, we need to get the goalkeeping area sorted. I see after this, it being the goalkeeping area. And I think then we're done. I don't think we go for another attacker. I think we would like to sign a striker. I think the issue with the striker is the availability of them. And I think it's an area that we may see Chelsea come back to in January, where maybe there's more availability. We know, obviously, Ivan Tony is not available because of what's going on there, but he will be back in January. Um, and also just, just the current market view as well. It might be that there's just strikers that ain't happy. I'm not enjoying where they are, and they might be a good second striker, third striker, maybe even a first striker to compete with Jackson. I don't know. And I'm not saying I want to stop Jackson's growth to where he's trying to go, because I don't want to do that. I just think that we still need to have versatility up front and not, not have him to be relied upon for the whole season. Obviously, Brower's coming back, but Brower's not kicked ball for a long time, guys, and it's going to take him a very long time to, to potentially get his feet and see the type of bro that we're going to get back because he did have a very serious injury. So, you know, I think that the whole Nkunku thing doesn't help because I think if we had Nkunku still with Jackson, I think it makes it a lot easier. We have another killer on the pitch as well and it gives you options because even though Nkunku ain't a nine, you could maybe play him there still to give Jackson a rest in the 60th minute or something. Do you know what I mean? Or So I just feel that we'd want a striker but I wouldn't want us to go and rush and buy a striker just because we need it and not actually think about how it works. Does that make sense? So I think it's important that we just get it right, in my opinion. Get it right. Don't rush it. Um, apparently, Paulinho is still part of an option for the midfield for Liverpool, I've just read now. So we'll see how that goes on as well. Sorry, I'm just reading some bits as we talk at the same time as well. So, yeah, so we'll see, interestingly, what happened with that. Oh, got what I've done there. Um, moving away from this, I want to quickly look at at least, say, stats, guys. Obviously, it's the 350 of you here. Big up to every single one of you guys that are in here at the moment. Big love, as always. But I want to have a look at at least, say, his stats. Because his market value says that he's worth 38 million euros. That was capped on June 20, well, 20, 2023, which is quite recent. So we're in and around the brackets of where we should, or what we should be paying for him correctly against that. When you look at how he's performed last year, well, he played 37 games, which tells me his availability is very good. Um, he played most games. He only had two goals in them 37, but he was hugely influential with the assists. And, and that is the difference in the instance of Elise, because... Yeah, we don't score many goals. And that might be partly to do with playing for Brighton. We'll find out. And Brighton, Crystal Palace. 
But in terms of assists, look at what he's doing at a team like Palace, a team that maybe don't dominate the ball, don't have much of the ball. He's coming to a team like Chelsea that will dominate most games now, especially with the midfield that we have. I expect us to have a lot of the ball, technicians, aggressive power that will allow the likes of Elise and others to then focus on being the creative sparks, maybe potentially adding goals. And I think the creative spark is why Chelsea are looking to sign Elise because he will bring Jackson a lot of chances and we need to do that. We need players to be a lot closer to him, but we also need players that are able to beat a man, which I think he can do very well, and also pick a pass out or pick a cross out when, when required. And that's why I can see why Chelsea is so interested in Elise. I think it's a good signing for us, I do. I think he offers... Something we, we don't have. Um, the injury thing is, is a question mark. I mean, he's not really a player that suffered from, um, that suffered from, you know, heavy injuries, shall I say. Let's go to his profile quickly. See if I can find his, his injury record. Yeah, he's got a hamstring at the moment. But when you look at his, uh, can't I click into it? Why can't I click into it? Why can't I click into it? I can't remember where it is. I used to do it all the time. Let's have a look. Injury record. There we go. When we look at his injury record, he's only forever logged that amount of injuries. One was right down to rest, which is just one game missed for Reading. He had a plantar fast, whatever that is, where he missed only two games in 12 days and then the biggest one was his hamstring injury and yes hamstring injuries are serious it depends on the tear and whatever i get that and players need time to recover from that the hamstring injuries are also players that are able to get over them there are one injury that can be a continuous in situation like an angolo cane for example whatever we saw of him and they just never recover from it or they come back stronger and, you know, train well, hamstring goes back to normal and they kick on. And he's still very young, guys. Just remember that as well. He's not in his 30s and ripping his hamstring every Do you know what I mean? He's still very young. So I expect at least say not to have these type of injuries moving forward or issues moving forward. But the question mark still sits there. And that will be um, a risk that we'll have to take. And it's not, it's not a huge risk. You know, it's not a huge risk. Um, because of what we're signing him for. But 13 goals is impressive for a side like Pace. I agree, RD. I agree. Um, stats, we might sell Matson. No, because Matson plays off the left anyway. And I think Matson gives us an option off the wing back areas. If we're not playing too well, you could probably play him there. He has a grade three hamstring. That's not good. Okay. And obviously, that's a serious tear then, I'm assuming. So, okay. Well, again, we'll just have to wait and see. How it goes. Kudas has more injury records than Elise. So we'll have to see. But when you look at his injury record, it's not as bad as people supposedly make it sound, is what I'm trying to get at in all of this. So we move away from him and we'll see what happens more with that. Chelsea very close to that. Personal terms agreed. 35 million is what we're being told. We're waiting for more news around when this could be done. And it might be on the back of this guy who was confirmed yesterday. On a here we go to Chelsea. Romeo Lavia to Chelsea. Here we go. Deal agreed between clubs and fi a final short fee of 60 million. Add ons included. Structure also agreed. Lavia will undergo a medical test this week. Just informed by the clubs that the agreement has been reached. Romeo said yes to Chelsea on Monday. So this is that's when he made his decision Monday's week. And then on top of that, to back that, we also had the David Ornstein. Um, confirmation to say that we had reached an agreement with Southampton to sign Romeo Lavia on a fee uh, between 53 million, sorry, around 53 million plus 5 million add-ons, which brings him up to around 58 million, subject to a medical being finalised. We then found out more information from Fabrizio Romano on today on where he is, what's he doing, when's his medical, what's going on? And it was news of around... Romeo Lavia in London today in order to complete his medical test as a Chelsea player after 53 million plus 5 million agreed yesterday. Also, uh, David Washington David Washington also completed the final part of his medical today ahead of a club statement. So there you go. Lots of things are moving and happening and cooking with Chelsea. He is meant to be completing his medical today, which means once he's completed his medical, main part of his medical, 
it will then move on to all of the media stuff, you know, the introduction and what we see with Caicedo. I think that we're going to see this. So we've been told tonight is his medical, Lavia, not this afternoon. Some Someone's said it's tonight. It may be earlier. We'll have to wait and see. But I think by tonight, late, late tonight, we should have the just the whole presentation of Lavia to Chelsea, you know, the introduction, walking around the, you know, walking around the training group here, blah, 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 blah. I think that will happen today and they get it out of the way today. And then Lavia tomorrow has to hit training. You have to see Lavia training tomorrow if he's going to, for me, play for Sunday. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, he needs a good three days before kicking into Sunday. And even then we might not start with him if we, if Poch has the idea of starting him. I don't think he does. I think we will see Caicedo and Enzo start in this game, even though I'd like to see the three of them. And maybe you see Lavia if he's play if he's been training the last three days, coming on and uh, either replacing someone like Caicedo in the first game, or coming in and <clears throat> and and playing a three with the three of them. I don't know, but we will see the four three three. I really expect Poch to do that at some point, especially with Nkunku being out as well. It really shores up that midfield and gives us a lot of power. And when you look at the money you've spent on him, fifty-eight million. He has to be. He has to start games, in my opinion. So whether or not he starts against West Ham will be wait. We yet to wait to be seen. But it's an amazing signing. And some people, some Chelsea fans say, "Well, did we have to actually sign him?" Big up the blue, uh, the beautiful game. Nice to see you in the house, brother. Guys, nearly over four hundred people in here right now. Smash the lights, guys. Yeah, we've just spoke about that. Big up to Mo as well in the house. If you're not following him, go and follow him on the blue round, the blue lounge, guys. But over four hundred of you is in here. Get the likes up. Can we get the likes up, guys? Let's keep running out. We should be over 100 likes now. We probably ain't. We're 94 on Chelsea Fan TV, 81 on GNA TV. Let's see who can make it to 100 likes first. I keep saying it. Smash the likes for the midfield free. Lavia, Caicedo, Enzo, Energy, guys. Smash the likes. I want to see this get over 100 likes on both channels. So let's do it. Um, and Kunku injured. It's such a massive blow. We were looking forward to it. Oh, trust me. If there's anyone I was looking forward to it, I think most of us was. But I, from what I saw of him in pre-season, the chemistry, the, the the chemistry between him and Jackson, the build-up, I could see why Poch was frustrated after the Liverpool game when he said, I wish I had him, you know, I wish I had, you know, it kind of said, you know, and Kunku out doesn't help Sat, um, Jackson because they were building up good chemistry in, in pre-season. He was playing very close to him. So it's kind of like a second striker role for Nicholas and Kunku. So, yeah, it's a, it's a shame, but we, we stay on Lavia and we, someone's telling me, what did they just say? Simon Phillips today? Yeah, Simon Phillips. Let's have a quick look. What is Simon Phillips saying? Newcastle supposedly submitted a bid for Lewis Hall, by the way, guys, which is very, very interesting. I don't see anything from Simon Phillips. Before we continue with Lavia, I want to see what's been said about Simon Phillips. Simon Phillips. Um, Hakim Ziyech has passed his Galatasaray medical and will leave Chelsea this summer. So that comes from a Turkish journalist. Nearly million followers over there. So he must be quite legit, to be fair. Um, we'll see, guys, if we get any more news from like the Fabrizio's and everyone else, the Ornsteins on this one. But Hakim Ziyech supposedly has passed his medical for Galatasaray. We wait for more news on that. And confirmation on that, hopefully, while we're on live as we speak at the moment. But staying with Lavia, um, well, we've not had any confirmation as of yet. Medicals he has done, yeah, that's what we've just been told. So let's see what happens with Ziek and that Dodgers tweet, guys. If it's the same conflicting thing, don't tell me to look at it because it's just wasting my time. <laughs> The detailed medical check of Hakim Ziyech with whom Galatasaray is, is in transfer negotiations has been completed. All right, fine. So what I'll do is I will, to save us all time, I am going to copy this. as It's not massive news. It's just good news that he's actually leaving, in my opinion. So let's quickly throw that in to this. Let's throw that into this. Save it. And then people, when they come in, We'll see the news of Hakim Ziyech. Staying on Lavia, why did Chelsea sign him? Was it a good reason to do so? Of course it was. Of course it was. And 
yeah, he might not play every game this season because Chelsea ain't in Europe, but you got to think past that. Lavia is a 19-year-old player with a lot of ability, raw ability, top ability. And he's one player that I was very interested in Chelsea. Uh, yeah, I know, Ashraf, tell me, who will Chelsea sign today? Probably Lavia. <laughs> um, and, you know, he's definitely one for the future. And people need to sometimes look past the now. What we're doing now is also for the future. And when you look at the midfield of Enzo, Caicedo, Lavia, that is a midfield that's built for years to come. Years to come, guys. You know, and I just think we've we've just nailed it. I really do. Secret Scout has also added to the Lavia news and said here, um, Lavia will also have his medicals day ahead of his move to Chelsea, aim to have him available for West Ham. Is what Secret Scout seems to believe and think is the case. We're going to get the panel in soon as well to go through all of this and discuss as well. But it's a big signing. Yeah, people may say we overpaid, but in the long run, again, he's performing on the pitch. He keeps himself fit. Continues showing the talent that he showed at Southampton at a better team, playing in, in more competitive games with better players around him. I think you see Caicedo and Lavia just prospering and getting better and better. And then the machine of that main field just ticks and we just start seeing it float. And that's the great thing, right? That is the real great thing in all this. Seeing that happen um, is is massive. It's absolutely massive. This is like Iniesta, Busquets, Xavi. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say that far yet, RD. We have to wait and see. I think Lavia would love to stay. I know he may potentially get European football and silver. Exactly. Exactly. It's a big opportunity for him as well to come to Chelsea Football Club as well. And then it falls into, well, look, we'll keep you updated. Obviously, we're at this point now. It's a case of we're waiting for the medical to go through the announcement of Latvia. Lavia today would be great. Hopefully we see him in training tomorrow and then we move from there. And then we talk about the midfielders we currently have to hand. And when you look at Enzo, Caicedo, Lavia, Santos, that was what you call a midfield revamp just there. you got, you know, you got one player there who, and I'm talking about Santos, who is a big young prospect, probably one of the biggest in the world in for his talent and what he's done up to this point, especially with Brazil. Um, next to him, you've got Lavia, who we just spoke on, and the abilities and raw talent at the age of 19 and what he can bring for the future of this club in a specialised DM role. Also versatile to be used in different systems. Gives you that option, and that's great. Then there's Caicedo. Again, not the most experienced. 21 years old, but just getting better and better every season. He was unbelievable last season. He's now took his step into Chelsea Football Club, and it's just, you know... Again, with the people around him, the quality around him, we'll probably up his game and we'll start seeing the Caicedo. And I think with Caicedo, again, he has a specialist attribute about him, which we don't, we just don't have. The box-to-box aware, the aggressiveness, the tackling ability, winning high up the pitch, the pressing. He is just full of energy and he is just, I think he's going to be worth every penny. And then there's Enzo Fernandez, and what is there to say about him, really? He is going to be the heart of this midfield for me. Um, in terms of what we do moving forward, the ticking, him receiving the ball pretty much all the time. Anything that goes good for Chelsea, I'm pretty sure we'll go through Enzo Fernandes. And if we can see more of the Liverpool performances that we saw from him, but have them behind him, this is scary. This is scary stuff, guys. This is scary times for any rival to see this, to have the energy, the technical, the ability behind him, the power of Lavia, Caicedo, going to him, go forward, do your thing, we're here now, we do what we do best here, you know, under pressure as well, they're both very good under pressure, breaking the lines, making these passes in, there's so much to their games, the tools that they have in their locker, I can't explain how important these two players now coming in are to this midfield and what we're going to try and do moving forward in the system that Poch wants to play. And we saw parts of it going into this, uh, into the Liverpool game without these midfielders. It is scary times. It is scary times. And Santos sitting around all of this is just going to learn from it all and be given the time. He won't probably play as many games, but, you know, he's playing with top quality young players who are, are you know, moving forward like him pretty much. 
You know, it's it's exciting times. I won't be surprised if Lantos may leave. I don't think so. I think it stays. West Ham game this weekend. Let's go, Chelsea. Come on, Tasty T. So am I, brother. So am I. It's going to be a good one for sure. Guys, keep tapping the screen. Keep tapping the screen. Keep tapping the likes up if we can, please, as well. Um, Gallagher getting sold and Leslie going on loan. So midfield, yeah, yeah, I, I think that could happen. But Gallagher may not get sold and that may not be the case, you know. But, man, will we see this? Will Chelsea or Poch, shall we say, will Poch do this on 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 a, on Sunday? That's the real big question. Will we see that? And I really want to talk quickly about Poch before we get everyone else in um, in a second. But let's see if this does happen. He has... T- With Poch, guys, I feel like... And I think well, I feel like we have to have this discussion. But I think the expectations have changed for the manager now. Uh, for me, personally, I think he needs to now get top four. Um, any title charge bollocks that rivals keep telling that use that we should be doing is irrelevant. There's still a... Um, I want to say teething, and I'm not saying that the chemistry can't get built up very quickly, but there's still a timing issue in terms of allowing these new players to come in, settle, mix with the new new quality around them, build, you know, build, but then also gain experience. And experience is key for this team. And yes, why they're all raw and have loads of, you know, loads of energy and talent, they do have their own experience in, you know, in what they've done up to this point. But to put the pressure on this Chelsea team to be go to go and challenge for titles because we've bought Lavia and Moises and whatever and you know talent wise they're they're really top quality is wrong because we've also got a new manager that's only been here just now who's still implementing his system with all the players prior to Caicedo and Lavia who still need to come, obviously come in and, and learn with that as well. Not to say they can't do it quick, and I'm not saying that. I still expect us to win games. I still expect us to get top four. I still expect us to maybe push for the domestic trophies. We can put a stronger team out because we ain't in Europe. I want to try and see if we can win a bit of silverware. And if we can win one of the silverwares this season and get a top four finish, which is bare minimum for me, we have to get back up there. Then I think Pochettino's had a very good start to the season. But the key part in all of this is the progression. Because we have to ignore what happened last year now. We finished 12th. It was crap. It was the worst in Chelsea's last 30 years of watching Chelsea. It's probably the worst position that we have finished as a football club. But now it's talking about them now and what we do moving forward. And for Poch to earn the respect, in my opinion, of these fans... I think he needs to start progressing and we need to start seeing managers progressing, which means we need to start seeing these players having the winning mentality so that when you go one nil behind, they don't just falter and give up like we've seen in the past. I want to see mentality. I want to see progression. I want to see systems, game plan, styles, which we are seeing consistently. I want to see him be, be a manager. He has no reason not to, you know, get this to work now. He's been given the tools more than Potter, more than Lampard, more than Tuchel, in my opinion. He's been given the tools of, you know, quality young individuals that have already played in the Premier League, that know the Premier League well, that pretty much boost this squad in terms of, in my opinion, in terms of its uh, need as well. And the pressure's on for me now. And I will be watching Pochettino. I will be putting pressure on him as a manager because I need to see it. But don't let any rival tell you that we're lowering our standards because we're not saying we should win the league. If we find ourselves in in a position where we're actually challenging somehow, it would shock most of us, I'm pretty sure. Let's be serious. But we have to be realistic. Top three and the trophies, what Bombastic's saying. I expect Enzo and Caicedo will play and Lavi will wait. I think so as well. Big up, Matty. How are you doing, bro? Uh, fifth place might get us CL. That's true. We also need to finish in the top five. Sorry, not top four. So the bare minimum for me is getting Champions League. Whatever way we get it, I need to see us in Europe next season. I don't think Man United are as stable as people think now. I think their midfield is, is, is actually not that good. 
Liverpool, if they don't sort out their DM, are in trouble, in my opinion. They're just going to get run through. Tottenham are irrelevant. They always are. Not really worried about them, even though they're always here and they're up there, but they, they're just irrelevant. Arsenal are supposedly, in their minds, of Arsenal fans, you know, after last season, one of the best teams in the Premier League and, you know, all of a sudden have found their... Uh, their winning trousers again and think that they've won trophies and whatever but they still need to go and do it which they haven't done but you know they've, they're a lot more ahead because they've got a manager that's been there for a while system yeah they should be up there Arsenal they should in my opinion but and then there's City and then if you're going to win the league against City in my opinion forgetting Arsenal against City you need to be willing to lay 90 points on the table Lose minimal games the whole season. You can't be losing seven, eight games. You can't be doing that. Yeah, you can't be drawing games. Constant games like we did last season or whatever, 11, 12, 13 games. You need to go and win games consistently. That's the big test. I'm not saying that's what we need to do now, but we will need to do partly because if we're going to get Champions League, we need to win anyway. But to then go to that next level and compete with Man City's, I think... This is a team that's being built for the future to be ready for that. Because each and every season that these lot play and Poch is there and they drilled and we see progression and we're getting closer and closer and closer. That one season, and I think it will be in maybe one to two seasons, they'll be ready. They will be ready to challenge and they'll be up there. And that's the way I see it. And that's the way it's got to be now with us. We have to put that pressure on. We can't spend the money we have to not see success. And that's going to be key. But how do we use... How do we use the squad that we have now on paper? Well, ignoring anyone else that comes in. If we do play against... Um, uh, if When we play against West Ham on Sunday, and we've still got to do that, do that match, uh, match preview, we have options. Because if we do decide to go to the 4-3 and Lavia passes his medical, you now have Lavia in the team playing what I would say in, in the middle role of this. Enzo as an eight. Kaiseido is an eight. Mudrick off the left, Sterling off the right, based on Madwaki and others that are not available and Jackson up front. The, I think the back four will be that, in my opinion. I think Silva will play. I think Cole will play. And it'll be Chilwell and James. Um, but then it gives us options because if we do decide to not play Lavia and we play a two in midfield, well, we could still play Lavia. But we could still play Lavia. You could see it more like this, a 4 2 3 one. Now, some people say they don't want to see Enzo Fernandez in the 10. I think he offers the ability to create as, as of a 10 role, but I don't think he plays as like a fixed 10. I think he plays more as an 8 slash 10. Like a bit like how Mason Mount used to do things when we used to play him as like the, the lone guy in front of the two midfielders, right? That's what I think he'll do, but just obviously a bit of row. And we saw Enzo Fernandez. Arriving in the box very late, being here, going there, going here. Just he has to have he has to have this freedom role. You can't tie him down to this or being there. He needs to be free to do that. And if he knows behind him these two are here, then fine. And look, even if he doesn't play, let's just say that Lavia doesn't play against West Ham and we start like that. I still think it'll be a four three three. I still think we'll see um, this. We'll see something like this with Caicedo being predominantly the guy that sits in front this time. And then what you do is you put him there, Enzo playing in that freedom role again. And then you probably see Gallagher. I'll be honest with you guys. I can really see Conor Gallagher coming back into this team and playing around that midfield. And it doesn't look as bad because now we've got Caicedo in there and it kind of helps Gallagher a lot more from the defensive duties. But the one thing I would say is it will allow Enzo Fernandez to still do what he needs to do, knowing that Gallagher, who maybe will have the freedom role as well as an eight, will be running around intercepting, winning tackles, Caicedo just sitting and picking up and distributing. So it gives us so many options on how we attack teams, how we try and play teams. Yeah, he, He'll play Ashraf. He'll play. Madwake, he's not fit. Ali says he's not, but he's not going to be around till September. He'll play. You know, I think once they're fit, he'll get moved off to the left. And especially until when Kunku comes back. And then Sterling's really got to kick forward for me. He needs to start waking up. Um, and then we'll see what goes out and happens from there. Um, but yeah, you know, it's going to be intriguing and interesting to see. I have got the panel coming in as well. 
we do have a second, pretty much a second team in all of this. What news have we got here? What is this? Oh, I've seen this. It's a waffle. I am going to put the link in here. Um, and yeah, I mean, what are your thoughts on what I said there? We have multiple options in that midfield now. If we can add a player that can play cam slash right wing, sweet. Well, that would probably be, that would probably be, um, for me, that would probably be Alise if he comes in. I think that's how they will utilise him. Um, I think Gallagher will, will start with Enzo and Caicedo. Yeah, I, I think so as well. I think so as well. Um, when Nkunku returns, it will be like a new fresh signing. Oh, I will. I can't wait for that. I really can't wait for that. Hassan, what are you saying, mate? How are you? Yeah, yeah, I'm all right, man. How how you been, Jeff? Hope you are well. Yeah, not bad, mate. Not bad at all. Um, just looking at the options that we have available to us, bringing in Lavia, it kind of opens it to even more. I mean, I know Caicedo and Caicedo coming in gave us that, like, extra protection midfield but just i think what i'm trying to get to at the point with lavia is now having him and caicedo but specifically lavia it allows us to do so much more with the systems with than, than just just having caicedo and enzo does that make sense so it, it just it gives us so much more array of options and systems we can have yes, lavia and the team playing different things i 100 uh, agree uh, jim <coughs> and we've been crying out for sort of like the midfield options and the midfield versatility before and of course the signings and having Lavia there I, I believe we balance out and each midfielder contemplates one another and assists one another whether the, and they also assist their weaknesses and in a sense I just can't wait to see how, how they, they would operate on the pitch and under the system and it's just going to give us so much attacking options going forward. And we've been crying out for this for the last few years now. <laughs> I don't know how to react to it, Jem. I think we've been starved with the midfielders for so long. And it does. Yeah. It's just going to be a really, really good one. I just, let's just hope that Lavia Dia gets over the line. There's no more contradicting. Well, there's always something contradicting sources whenever it comes to Chelsea transfers and stuff. But. As far as we were, he is coming in by probably within the next 48 hours. And to be honest, you should go to the main man couch himself because he, yeah, he's a big, big fan of Lavia and he could tell you a lot more than I could. Yeah, we're going to come to couch in a second, obviously, on this as well. But, you know, again, someone asked for a free 4 free. We could see this against West Ham and it could look something like this. And, and, and this is obviously without the fact that Lavia may still be on the bench. Let's just say he doesn't make it till training till Friday. There's a good chance he probably won't play Sunday. But if he's signed off today, which would be in told medicals today, um, does all of his media and whatever, he'll be available to train tomorrow. Then it gives him the opportunity to be available on Sunday. Of course he does. But what I'm trying to get at, and I'll go to couch in it, is obviously is we're focusing uh, mainly on, <laughs> I say your boy, Lavia, because he is a player that is now giving us more options in different systems and allows us to do more different things. But even if he doesn't play, we still have this type of squad and it's just amazing couch, right? That we can play so many different types of systems and it actually looks very balanced for once rather than what we've seen in the past. Man, <laughs> man. First of all, big up chat, big up Hassan, big up Jim. Um, yeah, we've just been starved. I think Hassan said it, Hassan said it best. We've just been starved the last few years. We're looking at guys like Zakaria, Everyone's like, oh, he's a good player. And I'm like, like really? There's been a long, long run of, of midfielders that have come into the squad that we've kind of been force fed to think that these guys are, you know, what the quality that we need in the midfield. You know, aside from, you know, obviously, you know, Ngolo Kante, who's without question world class, and, you know, aspects of what you got from Kovacic and aspects of what you got from Jorginho. Everyone else that came into that midfield was just an eyesore. Let's just be real about that. With Lavia, um, with the complement of midfielders that we have right now, Lavia to me is still a young profile player. But I think the thing that stands out for me the most 
is the fact that when you watch him play, you don't think of him as a 19 year old. You think of you judge him as a seasoned veteran, as a guy that has been playing for three, four, five years already. And that to me is a testament to how good he is at such a young age. You know, that is what it's about. Like this guy, his deep, well, first of all, he's a physical midfielder. You can play that deeper role, obviously. He's press resistant. He moves left, right, north, south with effortless ease. His his agility is something that you want in midfielders. You don't want a guy that's just a north south midfielder. You want a guy that can possess his agility to go northwest, east, west, you know, all over the place and win tackles in those positions as well. Not just, you know, he's a seek and destroy guy, but not not just a seek and destroy guy, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, also, his passing range is incredible. Like you watch his deep his his uh, his deep balls. Great. His through balls, great. This this is still a very young profile player, but what he's showing us right now at such a young age is unbelievable. That's why teams were playing over the odds. That's why we paid over the odds for this guy. It's not necessarily because he's the finished article right now, but his growth tree at this age is immense. Uh, it's, immense. Ridiculous. it's ridiculous. And when you look at what he did at the bridge last season, I've never seen someone Barring maybe Caicedo, actually, when he was playing up against us, bullied the midfield like he did against us. I mean, I, I was just, um, but I was, and it's not even that he's just done it against Chelsea. I've seen him do it against Man United. I see him do it against Arsenal. He's just so good with the ball. People like undermine how actually good he is with the ball. Like he's quality with the ball. Like his movement on the ball, the way he shimmies and flicks round and you know finds the eye for a pass. Defensively, he's neat. You know, he gets into tackles, he's physical, he gets around. But what Caicedo and Latvia, Bo- Latvia both offer is not just obviously the power and what we need, it is covering the areas and being good defensively, but they give us also the the, the technical ability moving forward yeah, in transition. And, and you think you about know? trying to be like a ball possession team, a team that wants to keep possession and, you know, play those direct balls in behind. You can't think of a better midfield than what we have right now. And Enzo, Lavia, Caicedo, like these are guys that love to make those passes in behind the defense as well, those direct balls in behind and have the physicality and also the, the technical ability to keep the ball incredibly well. This, these signings that we made, everyone's thinking that it's a little bit overkill because we've kind of like, you know, we have two players for each position. I don't see it like that at all. I see it like, you have now created a squad that is competing in training every week and are competing on the pitch as well. This is how you, sh- this is how you sharpen your team. Steel sharpens steel. Remember that. You don't just have one player that you expect to be your, your, you know, your 90 million pound player. Then you complement that with like a, a youth product. That's not how you build a proper team. You remember we were talking about Chelsea back, Chelsea of old, when Chelsea used to have like, Two players every position, every one of them was like a captain or something like that for their for the national team. This is when you return to that. Like I remember you used to read articles like Drogba talking about like they used to kill in training sessions. And it's not because it, it's not because yeah. obviously they're obviously highly pre- competitive and whatnot, but it's because you had to kill to get on the pitch to feature on the weekend. So this is the kind of the, the healthy competition that yep. I want to see return to this club. Do you know what also I know, what, what I think we'll have, especially, especially more when we have, all right, two of them, I can see it happening, but having all three of them on the pitch, I just expect us to dominate possession a lot more. Just, And I know we did in the past, but but I just I just expect us to just win balls back quicker, dominate games over longer periods, because it was parts of what we see in the past where we would dominate, but we'd lose, we'd lose that control and then we'd lose the game, right? Because we just didn't have the legs or the midfield would let us down or whatever. Now I don't I don't, I honestly just don't see that if we don't have the ball I expect us to hunt it and be able to win it back quickly enough exactly. for the other players to do it. Do you know uh, what I mean? And, and Jim, we also have the capabilities of transitioning from the midfield yeah, now. Exactly. Quicker. Well, <laughs> uh, we we got off. the players that can actually ping a through ball for once, so there is no Brilliant. excuses for these. Lot. That's what I'm saying. So these attackers are going to love having a Lavia and the Caicedo. And, and obviously we know if, what Fernandes can offer with the ball with his feet as well. So it's just, a, for me, I still can't get my head over what I'm looking at. I can't believe I'm seeing Lavia, Caicedo and Enzo on the same pitch. I just can't. Like It's just, it's mind-boggling how good this midfield really is on paper. And it is still very young. And we have to make note of that. Yeah, it is still very young. But like Couch said, the growth between what they can do potentially at a, a top club like Chelsea, the competition levels, having the killer, learning to, to grow in that killer way so that when we have that mentality 
when we start winning things with this group of players, which I truly believe we can do, they will just, you know, they will just they'll have that hunger. But injuries and keeping themselves fit, fit is going to be key. Nyak with the super chat. Big up to him. He says, best comp to this team. We've been eating uni, uni, uh, uni ramen noodles for six plus years. <laughs> and now we have been provided free Michelin level uh, uh, steak. Street? Le 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 steak Michelin sorry. level steak, man. Steak. We've been starving here. Yeah, no, no. Oh, you get, I get what you're saying. Right? Big up to you, man. Nice to see you as well. Thank you for the donation as well. But yeah, he's right. Right? It's the best way of, of actually explaining it. But we've also got an introduction from Forward, someone that we've not seen in a while on this show, is now turned up and uh, probably has a lot to say. I'm sure he's a very happy Chelsea fan as well. What are you saying, Forward, man? <laughs> no, long time no see, buddy. Listen, um, again, pleasure to be on the show as always. And it's a good time for Chelsea fans, and that's no better time to return than now, is it? So um, I'm glad to be on. I'm glad to see that Chelsea are in, heading in the right direction. There was obviously a lot of negativity last season, and I was one of the fans that said it was obviously terrible what we're seeing football um, on the pitch, the decisions behind the scenes as well. But one thing that I was still like, firm on was that as much as this board is making a lot of mistakes and obviously new to the sport, they are still showing a lot of ambition, and that was something that gave me pos like gave me like positive reinforcement for what's going to happen in the near future and the long term future of the club. And I'm glad to see that they've enacted on that ambition immediately, um, not just in January but also this summer again as well. And it's a sight to behold, and to see us again, quote unquote, win a transfer window is great, but it's more than that. It's actually building a team for the future that can compete on all fronts and play also the football that I want to see played because. For a lot of time as a Chelsea fan, I saw football that was effective and won trophies. And I was happy with that because we're all here to see our team win and be successful and beat our rivals. But I wasn't always a fan of the football. I couldn't really, let's say, like feel as good as I would. Let's say watching, let's say, a Barcelona or even an Arsenal in previous years where they play such great football. That, but now seeing the team, the players that we're getting, seeing the, the profile of players that we're attracting to the club and looking to build around. It's really positive signs that we're we're playing not we're gonna not just look to build a team that plays great front foot football, not just trying to defend and part the bus, but as well as playing great football, this is a football that we know can win and be effective in this era. So I think I speak for a lot of Chelsea fans when I say I'm very optimistic and happy about what's gonna be happening in the near future. So bring it on. Yes. And your your thoughts on Lavier as an individual? Obviously, this shows more around him. I've not spoke to you or even on quite say that, but what are your thoughts mm. on these two signings of uh, based on their profiles and what they can bring to Chelsea? Yeah, I mean, just with Lavier first again, quality player. Um, a little bit surprised that Man City didn't look to keep him and keep him as the understudy to Rodri. Again, they bought in Phillips for like 50 million, it's hardly played. You can see looks a little bit like a fish out of water, which is a shame to say because he's a decent player, but just doesn't really suit the, system, the City system. But Lavia certainly would, and he would have been a good understudy for Rodri, but they've obviously let him go. Um, to Southampton's gain and now to our gain, or not Liverpool's. Um, and again, I spoke with Couch about this before as well. Like I didn't think we were going to get him on top of Caicedo. Um, I do recognise they have different profiles, but I figured that we'd only get one of those guys because someone like Lavia just would probably want to be more of a a firm start as a DM, but again, having watched more of him and his profile, I understand that he can coexist in the same team in the same midfield. And um, I think the biggest thing about it for me is that obviously, of course, he's a great passer, he's great on the ball, um, great, great physical attributes as well. But it's the fact that now, if we want to have that balance in midfield and we go up against big teams like we did against Liverpool on the weekend, we don't have to go to a back three to have that balance and control the game. We can just play these three in midfield, have good fullbacks you can provide that width as well and attack also defend and then we can still have three attackers up front so we don't actually have to go to a back three we can just play these three in midfield have that balance but then also be able to transition create our own attacks and score goals and it's very exciting um it's very exciting so again for the midfield that we've really future-proofed ourselves for the next 10 years is, is is super exciting with these talented players so it's um it's amazing to see but obviously for this season still I think there's still a little bit of work to be done in the attacking areas. And I'm saying that even with the players that we have, that they need to improve and show that they can score goals. Because in this in this system that you're showing on the on the um on the screen here, it's a lot of onus on that front three to score goals because I always picture there being more of a four, two, three, one where you have four attacking players, because I don't feel like we have guaranteed 30 goal a season attackers right now. And if we are going to play these three in midfield, of course they are great and they can provide goals in them in their own right, especially Enzo. It feels like we're going to still need a lot of goals from our attack if we're going to be a team that can potentially challenge for a league title. So 
I think that remains to be seen in how Poch finds the solutions for that and also the players themselves rise to the occasion and improve in that I mean, area. But, um, we have to see. but we lost in Kunku. Yeah, that's, 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 that's the, the real big blow of the season. Again, okay. losing our most expensive attacker, losing our most expensive defender that we signed um, in the last two years. Um, so it's a big blow to start the season, but again, we're used to it now. I think the nice part is that at least we've bought so well that I think we can we can do we can cope with those losses, but it's going to be a blow, and it's going to mean that players like Modric, like Sterling, like potentially Noni, or Lise coming in, which is another big signing. These guys are going to have to no. step up and produce those goals. So um, we'll see how they get they, they go and do it again. The opportunity is there, so now they've got to take it and be those guys who can get you goals and win us games. Hundred percent. And we're going to talk about Elise in a bit, actually. But I'm going to quickly go to Winter Surfer about this midfield, and obviously I've I've, I've heard. I've heard, I've heard his thoughts quite a lot on it. I know he's a happy man on it as well. But, I mean, what's your thoughts on getting both winter so far? Ah. <laughs> get your axe, man. Go get your axe. Get your axe. <laughs> Where is it? Is that... <laughs> <A> mighty <laughs> Thor. <laughs> you would never he's bid gonna again. Go get it. What's his name? You'll never bid again. Oh. <laughs> uh. I, I am, this is what I'm taking to chop down what's left of Anfield after we demolished them this week. Um, first of all, on a side note, my mission is nearly complete because Ziyech is nearly out the door. So I am loving life this transfer. Wow. Um, but yeah, I am extremely ecstatic. I I was excited yesterday, uh, sorry, last week, Jem, for the game. But I, I'm so excited to play West Ham. <laughs> This weekend, I just, yeah. I just, uh, I, I, I can't. Remember. I think probably sometime in the twenty one twenty two season, last time I was probably really excited to play a game. Yeah. Um. I, I it's just West. I, it's. I know it's a game against West Ham, but I'm just the potential of this team. I mean, we've, we've, basically, the defense and midfield is like so supreme on paper, now. Yeah, hundred percent. Really, the only question marks are for me. I, I'll back him, but the question marks are the goalkeeper and and the, and the forwards in terms of can they score enough. But I was then thinking, if the defence and midfield perform well, maybe we just need, we can edge a lot of games by the single goal or something like that. So, but I just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm very excited about the potential of this team. That to get both were, to get both was just unbelievable. Uh, you know, the way and also we're paying less than what Liverpool bid for him in the end for Navio. They bid like sixty million. We're paying like fifty eight million including add ons. So it's like unbelievable. And the way that we can also now keep Andre Santos and let him develop healthily in this game. So we don't have to over rely on him. We can push him in as a as part of a three or a six or an eight or something like that. That he can develop like he should develop at a big club. So that next season really can be his season to bomb on. That's what I really want. And now we can see Enzo. I mean, Enzo's got to be loving life having to go, do you know what? I'll defend a bit, but I don't have to defend as much as I have done the past six months yeah. of my life. I don't have to do that at all. And like Reese James and Chilwell can go, well, I can bomb on a bit now because I've got Kaiseido and Lavio back there. Do you know what I mean? I can, I, and I'm just, it, Man, I can't. I can't. I, can't, I, I want to play Saturday or Friday. I don't. Why is Sunday? I want to play. Do you think Friday it allows us? Do you, do you think it allows? Yeah. Do you think it allows us to be a lot more? Uh, now we've. This is the other thing. Obviously, now having them too. Do you think it allows the players on the pitch to now, like you just there said, there be more like let's let's actually attack more now. Let's yeah. actually try and create more. Yeah. And do more. I do. I do. Worry. I think. Yeah. I think the point of like, especially like the, especially in a four, even in a four, four at the back system with like Reese James and Chilwell. But sometimes maybe a bit hesitant because you in, in a wing back system you've got more defenders back there. But just yeah, just knowing that they you know okay we're going to bomb on, but like like I say they can like fill in because we mm. saw him play right back multiple times for Brighton. I'm not saying he's going to start there, but just fill in there. At least they can bomb on a bit, and Enzo Fernandez can like just go even further up. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Than he was even on Sunday. Just this guy is like I think Sunday was even in that team was such a complete performance, but just. Thinking like now he turns up at training and he's got these two monsters that are going to be mm. beside him or like that he's able to do that. It's just sensational. And even like the attackers can even go, okay, now we can get Enzo up even more. We've got support on the 
on the wings with Chilwell and and uh, Reese bombing on that. We can invert a bit more. Yeah, it's, it's very. Do you think exciting. Enzo goes a lot more? Do you think Enzo goes a lot more forward in a two though? If he's next to Kaiser, or do you think he's still going to be quite reserved? I think he. I think he still will. But if we, but if we especially play a three, definitely he will be. He'll be up there a lot more. But if we play a two, he can still do it. We saw it even last week in a two with Gallagher. True. I know we're playing yeah. three at the back, so it's a bit different. But it was just, yeah, just very exciting times. I mean, talk about, you know, talk about in a matter of days how this window is now changed. I told you when, as soon as the, I told you the fan base would change as soon as we signed Kaiseido. The optimism <laughs> yeah. would just go like that. A huge release, honestly. Just, and we've seen it. And now just, and, and, and now every, every time we link to a player, it's like, even if we don't get him, it's like, Fantastic. There's no like, oh, yeah. oh we've got to wait for this. It's like, it's just like pure, yeah, add them. It's fine. We'll go on. That's that's what yeah. I wanted. So, yeah. Just wanted exactly. to quickly say, we're going to be building in a three anyways, regardless of who's on the pitch. That's a system. He's going to build with three at the back. Defensively, we'll probably shift to a four, but pretty sure that regardless of who's on the pitch, we're building with three at the back. Why? Do you think that's just because of the number of defenders we have available? You think we have to play three? <laughs> Like no, I just well, okay. Well, when I say three at the back, I think it's going to be asymmetrical too, right? Like, so one of Reese James and Chilwell will go or go, and then the two defender central defenders. That's the system he's been using pretty much the entire preseason, and also what we saw uh, against um, the Liverpool. So, I just think that that's his base setup, and like most teams in Europe right now are doing the exact same thing, like the three yep. at the back. It's just inverting the fullback. It Chilwell just was closer to his goal. Yeah, it really just depends on who you want to make up your back three. Some people have a defensive midfielder in there, and you know, some people just go with you know a center back, two center backs, and a and a left sided uh, you know fullback. Or in City's case, sometimes they they use Aki in that role. You know, like it's 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 going to be three at the back. That's that's for sure for me. Interesting, interesting, Kelly. Before we go on to Elise, Lavia and what? Caicedo to Chelsea. I've not spoke to you on about it too much. How are you oh, I'd be pl- a Chelsea fan uh, at the moment? I'd be playing jokes and music, but I don't want to get you copyrighted. Hold that, Liverpool fans. Hold that. I don't even want to get into a whole speech about this shit. It's just... Caicedo, I expected. I'm not going to lie to you. you. You can't court your main priority target for about essentially six months and then not get him. But Lavia, Couch has been going on about Lavia ever since we were mad about Ugarte getting snatched. And, you know, I did always say he's a bit too young. But look at that midfield, man. Enzo, Caicedo, Lavia. Look at the options we now have backing them. Santos. This is a new era at Chelsea, man. That's all I want to say. I'm I'm here to get everybody's opinions. I want to hear everybody's new expectations. But... It, it's beautiful after what we went through last year. It's absolutely beautiful. Well, we're going to talk about the expectations uh, now uh, in a bit. I want to just quickly go on to Elise first before we do that. Um, let's go to let's go to forward quickly. Forward, Elise to Chelsea. Looks like it could potentially be done soon as well. Um, mm. What are your thoughts as a as, and I'm talking about the profile of the player on this one. Like, what are your thoughts on the potential to sign? Obviously, he won't be available to the end of September. 11 assists last season, not as many goals, but you know, he, he does bring something that we maybe we haven't got in the forward line, which is that creativity spark. So, what's your thoughts on him coming to Chelsea? Um, just an, a very talented player, a very gifted winger. Um, he will, has also got experience playing in the number 10 with Reading, especially as well. So, um, it's a really good profile, again, that we've tried to adjust in the past with Ziyech. But with Ziyech, I think we found that he's quite one-dimensional in what he can do. And um, again, he's got a wonderful left foot, decent set pieces, both which Alise has. But I think the big difference here is that Alise is a much better ball carrier and beat players 1v1. Forward, and two seconds. We just got breaking news from Ornstein on something that's just come out of nowhere. Okay, Chelsea, Chelsea have made contact with Ajax to express an interest in Mohamed Kudus. No offer yet, but no. Oh, 22-year-old attacking midfielder among options. Chelsea considering agreement close on personal terms with Kudus on this one. Wow. Wow. That's what I'm going to say. Hey, I'm, gi- I'm, I'm, I'm giving a yellow to the board. 
Somebody yeah, needs to tell them to calm down. Chelsea Y'all gotta calm well, down. Calm, yeah, the calm last, down. The calm last down, time calm we done something calm crazy as this was on the Roman one. <laughs> um, <laughs> under brother, under Roman Roman. Mourinho first time. Like, it's actually wow. getting scary out here. Wow. Yeah, yeah, exactly. This yeah, is like a football bro. manager level right now. Getting all the top talents. Pullback. Pullback. When was that, though? Pullback. Yeah, that pullback was in 2017. Ignore it. Ignore it, man. Yeah. <laughs> I was actually meant to bring up I don't see a Simon I see it pop up. I was going to Simon Phillips and I just see that nah, nah, nah. it's understandable in this climate, trust what? me. <laughs> I believe yeah. you too. Oh the, the funny thing with that is like he doesn't even link to the to the Lisa thing. Like, listen, we all like, get beard, man. We I say though, beard. we we thought it was a case of one or the other, but instead we got both. And in the situation here with Elise, we might get Elise and Kudos, which again is that's more feature proofing of the mm-hmm. squad, which is a good thing. So um, uh, congrats to you again that, that like, club funny. showing that kind of ambition. But um, again, back to Elise. Now. Um. Yeah, go yeah back but to back to Elisa again, <laughs> just um, offers way more, way more than a ZH. Um, and again, so somebody that's going to provide that creativity again. He got 11 assists in a team with Palace that had no striker of worth, worth a mention. Like, they have no attacker that you can say is of a top level, other than Eze, who did his work team from the number 10 position. But again, to get 11 assists at Palace, that's, that's, that says a lot. And again, his set pieces are different. His ability to cut inside and create with that left foot is different. So, um, again, I'm glad to have this guy in. Um, again, I did mention that when we, put, if you were to play three-man midfield for most of the season, goals could be a bit of an issue in terms of who's going to be able to produce those high numbers from our attacking line. Because when you look at previous teams that have had like a three-man midfield and then three attackers, you look at Liverpool. They've been a good blueprint in the past when they've had Firmino, who offers a decent amount of goals. But then you have Mane, 25 to 30 goal season player, Salah, the same on the right hand side, if not more. So. I feel like with us, can Elise become that? I think he's going to need to become that if we are going to become a free, um, free midfield team with only three attackers. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah. again, that's why for me the expectations yeah. this season isn't to go and now win the league and do a domestic trouble. I'm not going to go as far as that. I think we're going to talk about expectations a bit later on. But um, certainly it's going to be a better end season. And with all these talented players, I feel like it should be a lot smoother than we've seen in recent seasons. So um, I'm very optimistic and I approve the signing, especially at 35 million. It's for me, it's a bargain in this market. Big bargain. Yeah. What are you saying about big, him? big, big bargain? Um, again, another guy that I've just been watching and you know just salivating over for so long. And uh, don't get it twisted. I, I think he is a bargain in this market, especially when you look at the the fees that are being thrown around. But I don't think that he's yet the finished article anywhere near that. I think that he's we've caught him just when his evolution is starting to starting to happen. Like his football is really starting to evolve. He is very left footed. Um, a lot of the work that he does on his left foot, like even his dribbling, he doesn't really use his right a lot. So you're going to see oh, he's mostly one footed, but at the same time, what he does with that one foot is exceptional. Like his ball delivery, as like Ford said, is exquisite, you know, set pieces, um it's not that he doesn't use his right foot by the way uh he does use it it's just the quality on his right foot when he gets when he cuts onto his right is not it's not any it's not anything to write home about like anything if anything he'll get he'll go to the byline and try and swing in the cross with his right it's just a hit and hope at that point but where you see him on his left you know that he's telegraphing passes to people you know like when he's coming inside you know that he's putting that ball on some on a sixpence you know, they get it to, to get it to the uh, the attackers and whatnot. So the thing that I like about him right now in this team is the fact that we have a lot of players that want to play on the shoulders and want to get in behind. And the thing mm-hmm. that Elise brings that I think is different to anyone else that we have in the squad is that he plays <clears throat> at a pace that's a little bit slower so he can kind of like lull you to sleep. But then at the same time, when he's when he's making those passes in behind the defense, you know, it's like he slows them down in his head, but then he plays that ball and it's in a, on a sixpence again. It, it's the accuracy and the speed that he plays those balls with that will make us devastating on situations where, you know, we have those players on the shoulders and stuff like that. So I really think that this is a this is a signing that only adds to the chemistry and the synergy of the players that we've already assembled. It just looks like he's 
a great fit on the right based on the players that we have around him right now. So I'm excited. And I think that, yeah, going forward, you know, he's the kind of guy that can give you things on, even on the left that you won't see that we don't necessarily have right now, the ball delivery, you know, the ingenuity, the, the vision and whatnot. It's just, yeah, it's, 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 it's an incredible signing for me. Suke with a super chat says, guys, so I was watching Talk Talks today and one of them asked to name one player that would get in City's first 11, even though I couldn't see one. Any thoughts? From our squad, I'm Is that a joke? Enzo. Is that a it joke? Enzo. There's probably more than one. Reece James, Enzo. 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 Right. If Rodri wasn't there, Caicedo's literally on the bench, but you're right, won't yeah, start. Still but... Personally, but that's my opinion. <laughs> Because no, I mean, literally, if he's saying if he's saying midfield Enzo, if you're saying in the back line Reese James, if you're saying in the front, maybe maybe no one. There's no one in our front line. But this is also a team that. Well, just oh wait, wait, wait! I take that back. Wait, teams. wait! I take that back. Olise, because they were they were scouting for Olise. Right, they just saying, pulled like, out at the last second. Yeah, yeah no, 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 I'm not him. I'd probably throw in Kunku in there. Mm. To be fair. Absolutely. Yeah. That's a good shot as well. That's what I'm saying, guys. It's a new. It's a new era. Look at the squad. Like, who has a personal affiliation to anyone except for Reese James? Do you get what I'm saying? It's a whole I mean, brand new Kunku, squad. Right. Like, and Kunku, and Kunku is better than Grealish. Let's just, just not get into that. And he's better than... Who else are they? Hey. <laughs> right, it's not even a thing, man. Let's be serious. Like, he is. He was <laughs> Drums are back. You hear how Chelsea Paul fans are talking now. That's mental, man. Um, our Kevin De Bruyne... Over Kevin De Bruyne, uh, Ronaldo. Oh, Sarah. Kevin De Bruyne. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll choose Enzo Fernandez over him. <laughs> yeah, I'm joking. That nah. it's not a I wild would... statement. I mean, De Bruyne. Listen, he's 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 capable of great moments, but he has been on the decline for a while, and it's mainly because of the injuries that he's picked up again. So again, I'm not going to say Enzo outright better than him, but you would fit Enzo into that midfield. You'd find him to the it. right, and you put Enzo in the midfield. Oh, and again, yeah. Kovacic is starting for them. Enzo, we know, clears Kovacic. So. He's not yeah. starting for them, no. Or maybe now, because... Uh, he is. He, he started uh, against in the Community Shield and against um, Burnley. Well. He didn't start against Burnley. Didn't he come off the bench? Cause the, the oh, Burnley? sorry. He came up, sorry, he came off the bench, sorry. But, um, yeah, obviously, now with the PDB out, more than likely, he's going to be starting and playing a lot and of Kunku games. Kunku plays so. in that forward line, man. I don't care what anyone says. And Kunku definitely plays in their forward line. If he's mm. in, in and Reese James is a guaranteed start for anybody when he's fit. So. The point of that super chat was saying one person, and we've already picked multiple people in different places in the pitch. Mm. So Mate, I'm not Nkunku, here. And Kunku looks so good over the preseason. It frustrated me. <laughs> looks so it hurts. Good. It really hurts. I think, I think, he, was I think he was squad, going though. for 15 right. goal involvements, like, and not even before the end of the season. Like, that was going to be my controversial take. That before that was, we even got a, to April, he'd have 15 involvements. For me, I think 15 goals is what I'm looking at before even April, to be honest. Like, I feel like he's that kind of goal scorer from the wide areas, yeah. from the number 10. Like, I mean, I that's the real thing that we like without him in the squad. The only other person that we can really say that can offer goals from like a wide area or really? you're just behind the striker on paper is Sterling, but we haven't seen Sterling do that in multiple years now. Yeah. So then you have to look at can Mudrick do that? Can Noni do that? Can our Lise do that? They've never really proven it, so it just kind of remains to be seen. Whereas with people Kuku, keep, keep you see yeah. that he's done that. People keep saying, Well, when like you know, Lavia Lav only plays until when Kinku comes in when we play for, but don't get it twisted, he could play in on the left of a 4 3 3 like he has done. And just can't oh, play him all forward, forward, forward. Without and question, yeah. forward. Like that can be. Uh, done. Don't really one thing that. I wanted to mention that Couch said earlier is Couch is absolutely correct about this back three. People don't realize it. It's in transition. I, I don't know if this is the thing in modern football now where everyone wants to change between a back three and a back four, depending on whether you're in pos uh, possession or transition. But that three at the back, when you see James and Chilwell, Usually when we're in transition, attacking transition, he'll have, like, in the game against Liverpool, he had Chilwell essentially as a left winger. So he's inverting Chilwell. Okay. James will sit back a little bit more, and everyone will obviously, as a unit, that's why our press looks so good in the second half, push forward. So my thing is, if that's how we're going to be playing, you have way too much versatility. I, I don't even want to get into it. The amount of options, combinations, oh, link-ups you could... Yeah, it's oh, we're blessed. We're eating steak, steak caviar. 
it, it changes in game, and that's the big thing. Whatever's on the paper, like well, when it when it's set up, doesn't specifically mean it is through game, and that's what I've noticed with us, especially even in mm. in the short time we've seen Poch as well. We do switch systems in between game, and I think that's something he was trying to do. Maybe against, maybe it's it depends on who we're playing, opposition maybe in many ways, but it gives us massive versatility. Yeah. You know, and yeah, I mean Vic, just quickly, Vic saying that. Lewis Hall has had a bid for around thirty million. Um, coming Don't from- give him. Send him on loan. I'd say to that. Slap a um, buyback if you have to. No, <laughs> definitely slap a buyback. Only Chua would get in. They they said only Chua would get in. That's nonsense. I don't want to. Even then, uh, that's yeah. Hey, that's a lot of waffle. But that's we're gonna it. let that ride. Jim, we'll that out. Go give me the best eleven. Uh, not counting injuries. I just I can't see it. Uh, there's so many players that are so I good. Mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know. If... I don't think we have. I think we're in a position now where we d- we have may have like we may have like a eleven core eleven once in Kunku and everyone's back. But I think it may change slightly with the system where we play against the opposition. So it might be that we play four three three and Lavia, Caicedo, Enzo with Nkunku or left like we just done there. But then we could also then and it could be as strong. By the way. Play a four-two-three-one. Maybe Lavia doesn't play, or he does with Caicedo in the sixes, and Enzo's just a little bit further forward with le- with with um, Nkunku on the left, whoever on the right, and Jackson up front. Like, do you get what I mean? I think that's yeah, what yeah. Do, but you know, all you guys are talking about a back three, which tells me that Disarcy will probably play with Silva and Colwell. But then that means you've got to lose one of your wing backs if you're going to play. But the thing is, I don't think we're going to play a back three that often. Like, yeah. I feel catch is right. Like, the system will be like we build up with, with a back three. Because again, most teams now, they use a back three to build up, whether it's a 3 2 or a 3 1, like we're using against Liverpool with Gallagher being more the DM. Second off, we're going to switch it to a 3 2, where it was Enzo and Gallagher. But in terms of like us having to go and revert to a back three with three actual centre backs to have that balance, I just don't feel like we need to do that. Oh, that's, exact, that's exactly what I Solid meant. midfielders that we have now. That's exactly yeah. what I meant, uh, forward. That's exactly what I meant. It's just we were going to be mm. building from the back with three. And it's going to look like three. It's it's not yeah. going to be three center backs per se. It might be two center backs and a left, you know, the the left back or three two center backs and the right back and Reese mm-hmm. or two center backs and a, a DM, which is very rare. I haven't seen that a lot with um, <laughs> with uh, with from the, from the preseason, but maybe we don't have that right, but. Yeah, yeah. I just don't think that we're going to be building with, you know, with more than uh, with less than three. That's for sure. So Simon Johnson's come out of a comment here saying that Chelsea's Chelsea's selling off players. What I've been told is it's already taken tens of millions and millions of pounds off their wage bill, which then gets reinvested into signings via the athletic. <laughs> 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 Yo, these businessmen, you know. <laughs> well, what they're saying is, well, if we're removing a, a three, four year, let out, you know, outstanding contracts of a player that's on our books that's costing us X amount, if you take them off, our wage not only does our wage structure drop, but we also have more money to reinvest into the club. Hey, how does it feel, hey Liverpool fans? How does it feel to watch your cuck of an owner come to literally the bridge to try to snitch us out? For FFP to re-comment and then say everything they're doing is legal. How does it yeah. feel? How yeah, does it, it feel? I couldn't imagine. I couldn't imagine. Mm. But there is a catch to it. We have to qualify for Champions League or stuff, or we will catch up eventually. When we get to, when we get to expectations, if it's starting now, that shouldn't even be a discussion. So it really, yeah, that should. I mean, it, we should so, get there for FFP reasons. Otherwise, that's what I was trying to say. It will eventually catch up. So I'm no, 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 I'm, I'm, a, uh, a quick bomber as well on Ivan Tony saying that Chelsea are being informed weekly on how Ivan Tony's off pitch training is going ahead of potential January pursuit. That's Simon Phillips. If only he didn't get banned. Could you imagine Prime Tony and Jackson? Jesus Lord, I'm having visions. Woo. With this team, it is scary. <laughs> Absolutely scary. I've got to bounce. See you later, Couch. You take care of yourself, brother. Thank you for coming in. Uh, as well, we ain't going to be on too much longer. Respect, anyway, coach. But what I will do yeah, is yeah. quickly ask you about your expectations of what you expect to see of Chelsea now from what you've seen. Now, obviously, we might still get some more signs in and goalkeepers and whatever, but from what we have at the moment, at least they're potentially coming through as well. Don't gas me. I know Texas tell me if we get Ivan Tony, then this is next levels. But um, Hassan, yeah. let's go to you first. Expectations for Chelsea 
now. I you. think with the amount of signings that we have done, I would say that based on what I've been hearing, top five is minimum. If top five gets to CL, so basically Champions League football. Yep. And for me, it's to challenge in probably all cup competitions, considering we're not going to really challenge for the league. So it's literally FA Cup and League Cup. So challenging both of them competitions to go on to win them and top four. So basically, yeah. the, what should be our bare minimum? But let me since ask, we got let, a lot of the targets. Let me flip the question to you now quickly because there's two sides of this question before we finish off. That's your expectation. What is a fate? I mean, for you, in terms of Pochettino and what he has to do from now moving forward, what would you deem as a failure in terms of non progression in this, te- you know, at, by the end of the season? I think, obviously, for a complete, for me, right? I think a failure for me if he ends up getting finishing sixth or seventh outside the top four. The cup competition just really depends on who we get. It's a bit of a look and it's a bit of a draw. The draw can turn the favours. So I think for the league, if he does finish outside the top five, it is a little bit of a failure in a sense. I mean, we besides, I think a few people got question marks on the goalkeeper, but besides that, the other positions and the other weaknesses have been addressed this season. And since we're playing one game a week, there's enough time for his tactics to actually be implemented and enough rest for him to challenge for that Champions yeah. League qualification. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, forward, your thoughts, bro. Expectations obviously change now with the players that we've brought in. I mean, for you, I mean, there's obviously still question marks over what Poch can actually do. We've seen some sort of game plan style, which we haven't seen from mm. previous managers in a while. I mean, what's your expectations going into, into this season now? Um, going into this and going into last week, I should say it was probably just get top five and which would be Champions League um, obviously after now getting Caicedo and Lavia I'd probably have to say top four even though it's the same same um, it's the same award that you get with the Champions League football I still feel like I can't say that now there are four teams better than us in the league or that four teams should finish above us in the league so I would like to get a top four uh, for me personally I look more at like point, to- point totals because we can talk about, oh, challenging and this, that, and there's pressure on us to do a certain amount. For me, I had to look at more like the points because let's say one of these fans, you feel like we need to challenge. Um, me personally, personally, I don't feel like you can say within one season, yes, we've overhauled the squad, but it's still a new team now with a new manager. You can't expect us to now claw back 30 points in one season, which is what it would take based on like our previous four or five seasons to go and catch a Man City. So I don't feel like that's really reasonable. I think points totals, I feel like we should be aiming for high 70s, really like 80 points yep. around that. I feel like that's really what I'm looking at because that's, okay, that's just something to build upon for the next season where I want us to be then really put in a real challenge because obviously to jump from being a team that finishes, again, last season was a complete disaster, right? But prior to that, we were still finishing like high 60s, some 70s, like to jump from that to then being a team that gets 90 plus points, 95 points, which is what you need to really challenge. But that's just really unreasonable to ask in one season. So, um, yeah, yeah, for yeah. me in the league domestically, it's that um, top five or top four, really. And then for the cups, um, we have to win a cup. For me, that's what the expectation should be. You, you go and win a domestic cup, you give these players more importantly, most importantly, that feeling of winning, lifting trophies, being there, going to big finals, and then winning. I feel like that's key. And um, yeah, like Hassan said, obviously, the, like the, uh, the luck of the draw is going to be important in that. I think last season, <laughs> we couldn't have it any worse by drawing City both times first round away from home at the FT had like like it doesn't get much worse than that right so um, ideally we don't want that but um, again we have two opportunities to win a trophy in that sense I think we should win one and that's my expectation when it comes to that and I would just say yeah. one message lastly to Chelsea fans because I know there's a lot of them obviously have rival fans at work or in their friends group or whatever and they're like oh what team spent 800 million in two years or whatever and doesn't go and look to compete for the league or win the league and I'm like, okay, let's really break it down, guys, right? Like, so in terms of the players that we bought, who are bona fide starters, bona fide top class players, even though they're all young, because everybody we bought is young. Enzo and Casido, those are guys who go into any team in the world and be like, okay, we can play for a team that's looking to win the league, win the Champions League, fair enough. But I'm going to just look at just one area because we haven't got enough, a lot of time. But if you look at just the attack and just the wingers, particularly, I think we spent roughly around 170 million, which is a lot of money, don't get me wrong. 
But um, we spend that on kids. We spend that on Modric, Noni, and then the rest was also on Moreira and Angela, right? And two of the guys are going to go on loan. We're also going to buy a lease. So let's say it goes up to 200 million, right? That is a lot of money, but it is on youngsters. If we spend that money on Neymar, on a Salah, on let's say even Harry Kane, right? Like these like established world class names in their prime in like their late twenties. Yeah, no development time then straight then, then yes. Yeah, because at the same like because we've been real, you don't sign Neymar or can or Kane to be a part of a project. No, you send them to win today. <laughs> That's exactly why Bayern have bought Kane. They bought him because we want to win the Champions League this season. You haven't bought these wingers mm-hmm. like your Modric's and your Nonis to go and win the league this season. That's not the case. They've been bought on eight, nine year contracts, right? Kane's been signed on a four year contract. It's different. And again, also with these wingers, they're gonna, I've been saying obviously this whole stream that goals are going to be important. These wide players are going to have to step up, even just to just get us top four, top five. And one thing that I look at, right, and I'm not putting these guys down, but if you look at it right now, as of today, wingers that were signed this window, you look at the likes of Diaby at Aston Villa or even Harvey Barnes at Les- um, Newcastle. For me, I would argue Diaby is a better winger right now than Madiweke. I would argue, as of today, right now, Harvey Barnes is better than Modric. Not to say that they're going to be better forever, but I just feel like, as of right now, those are more established players who have done more... Premier League league. experience, yeah. And, again, that's why, like, for me, if we were going to just go for the league right now, then I'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah, get get the RB, because he offers more than than, than Madueke or and Modric. But, obviously, that's not the case. It's a long-term project, so that's why, for for fans who are being told by rival fans, oh, we must do this, we have to do that. No, it's not the case, because we built for the long term. So, it's a long-term project. yeah, that, that for that's sure. And obviously, for now, we just got to we just got to progress what we're doing, and again, reach those minimum requirements. Which for me, is Champions League and looking to, even if not really winning a cup. I, I agree with most of what you said, and I think most of what what rival, rivals have got a bit of you know like short term in, in many ways, in my opinion. They only see the now all the time. It's like, oh, you spent now, you got to win it. That's how their brains think, you know, and, that, and that's mm. that's the way it is. But it doesn't work like that, unfortunately. I don't think it's not Football Manager. We're not seeing it playing Football Manager right now. Yeah, all right, yeah, we spend a lot of money in areas that we've needed to, and maybe over the odds for players. But when you look at what we actually are trying to do with the age the age categories of the, the players that we've actually brought in, like like uh, Forward said, it's not a salary, it's not Kane, it's not experienced people that have won things, done things, been playing for a while. I'm not saying that they shouldn't be winning things, but to then say under a new manager, and it's 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 his first season as well, for them coming in to then bed, mix and play with these quality players in and around them to then go and have to challenge straight away in their first season. It's just not, it's just not right. In my opinion, for us to put that expectation was just not right in my opinion. So at the end of the day, yeah. they're not here just going, right. I'm here because we need to win now. Yeah. They're going to, they've already said they want to win titles. They want to win silver, go win a domestic, get yourself in the Champions League. That right there for me is progression from where we were, where we thought we were last year to where we are now, now and hopefully at the end of the season, that's where we should then find ourselves. But then the pressure then comes on because next season, when they've had that experience of being together, understanding the systems, being around Poch, the team, whatever, and then maybe us adding a striker into that and whatever, then you'll have to put the pressure on us to then compete. And the next part will be, right, we've got Champions League. We've got a strong squad. They've got another year under their belt. They're looking very, you know, it's looking good from what we've seen the rest of the whole of this season. Now the pressure is, let's go and compete for titles. We have a striker now. We've got the midfield. Defense is set. We're ready. Let's go. It's not all about no, no, no. You got, you got, you got. If you don't, you're crap. Because that's that's just rivals doing that. Because they, 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 I just I don't listen. Rivals to will always be rivals. We'll do the yeah. same if they spend the money. And you all I was gonna say, there, mate, because at the end of the day, you you, t- you spoke about how you spent uh, three hundred million. You've only won one Premier League in seven years, mate. You no, no, no. They want to talk about standards. All right, let's talk about yeah. standards. You, you lost your you wife and your you side chick. <laughs> you done exactly the same as what Leicester did when they won the title. You've not one title in thirty you're, years, and you're, you're giving it the biggest. I will always say this. <laughs> That's not a Our standards are for this season are probably realistic. I think next season is where we probably all agree that we demand to win and demand to challenge for every trophies for pot. Let me ask you nah. something. Here. As a Liverpool fan, are you happy on the basis that you in seven years you spent over 300 whatever whatever you've written there, yeah? Are you happy on the basis of what Liverpool have done up to this point over the seven-year bracket of where they were meant to be at the top of their A game with the best squad that you've probably ever seen in a Liverpool in your Liverpool time? In your life. One Premier League. And then, all right, Champions League and some cup, cup, and just that's it. 
and then just gone dead like you have done for a while. Are you happy with one it? set of each that? trophy? That's the truth. Like one trophy of each. I'm not, it's not even that. You know, like, it's not. Look, it's not. It's Jim, not. let me let me give them what they want, and then let me be real and listen to you. Fine, we got we, man. You guys are running for the pressure, man. We got to compete for the league. That's what we need to do. We're gonna win by ninety-five plus points. City suck. Arsenal suck. Everyone. No, let's be real. Okay. At some point in time, we need to be seriously realistic. Yes, we have spent a shit ton of money in a very little bit of time, but it's like you're only saying these things because your clubs didn't do it. Because had your clubs done it, you guys wouldn't be having the same expectations for your own club. The only reason Liverpool fans talk the way they talk is because they're Liverpool in name, not by what's going on in present. The reality is you guys have competed against Pep. In the last 10 years, you've walked away with two of the big boy trophies while he's cleaned everything up. And if you want to compare to Chelsea, since you're like, don't bring City in it, bring Chelsea in it. We have the same amount of champion leagues as your all-time GOAT manager, Klopp, in the same amount of time. So why are you talking this wax? What have you guys done for me to sit here and give you any type of decent respect? The only respect I give you is you took a Premier League trophy off of Pep. That's the only respect I give you. What else do you have? You're Liverpool in name by heritage. I don't even want to talk about you guys anymore. It's a waste of my breath. Getting yeah, on back to Chelsea. Yeah. Chelsea here, expectations. It's very simple, guys. 70 plus points and a trophy. There's no need to, you know, make it all big, anything like that. We need to show progress. The same way we watched that Liverpool game, the first half was atrocious, right? We all got scared. Let's not lie. That first half had everyone literally freaking out. The second half happened, and we saw it. Progress, right? Even if it was game one, no one can deny it. Progress. We need to see a full season of progress. Last season, we were absolutely abhorred. I need to see a 20, 25-point jump. It's that simple. Based on the money spent, that is a realistic expectation. Now, if anyone's saying we need to win the league, win, win both the domestic cups, stop that. You're chatting wax. Once again, if we get City and Indy either of these cups... Who's the favorites? Who, who were the favorites last year when they knocked us out of both cups? Stop that. Like, let's just be realistic. Once again, 70 plus points and essentially a final. Compete for one of the domestic trophies, barring if you get City. I think that's fair expectations. I think next year, if these expectations are met, we need to challenge for the league. Yeah, I don't think that's any Chelsea fans. It's time to wake up Habibis. It's been 2017. Since I've heard Chelsea fans talk the way they're supposed to talk, yeah? Do not forget who you are. Do not run from the pressure. This is Chelsea Football Club. We eat pressure. Dead ass, literally. Oh, yeah, yeah. Forget, forget that, Kali. We used to give pressure to the money gym players. <laughs> forget no, pressure. We, we, we are on paper in the last... And this is part of the reason why Kaiser and Lavia chose Chelsea. I don't care what anyone says. Yep, speak on we it. remember seeing Chelsea being successful the Makaleles, the McCantes, that is their generation the young kids they don't think about Ian Rush in the 1992s or whatever the fuck it was no one cares Kenny Dalglish and all that they don't Kenny Graham Sinus and that they, they don't Kenny Dalglish I... Ian Rush yo you think you think Castillo cares about Ian Rush get the they fuck out of here and when you look at it what Chelsea have won in the last 20 30 year bracket compared to these lot because uh, they're in the chat talking waffle we've won what we've won five Premier Leagues, they've won one. We've matched them in Champions Leagues, and what? How many? And, and we've smashed them on any other domestic trophy anyway. On Wait, Jen, Jen, Jen. This is gonna this is gonna be my point. Point. Liverpool fans complain about Chelsea spending money, but in the seventies and eighties, you were literally the highest spending club in the world. All of you are hypocrites. Please shut up. Anyway, I do need to finish off, brother. We won six Champions. Yeah, whatever. But anyway, ads. What are you saying? Anything you want to oh. say? But I mean, like, this guy's saying we won six Champions Leagues. You, you, you are alive for how many of those? No, one man, I re- no wait, 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 wait. I repeat myself. Do you remember one in 2005? <laughs> this guy talking in the chat? Probably, probably no, not. no, 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 no. <laughs> Listen, once again, most of your Champions Leagues came when you were the highest spenders in the world. I'm not hearing this bullshit. This is meant to be your all-time greatest era of Liverpool football. <laughs> yep. you're not getting in your head. You've won one <laughs> Premier League in seven years. That is disgustingly bad. You can't That's even so compare Mourinho to Klopp, man. Period. You couldn't even celebrate your trophy because it was COVID. Does it even count? Like, let's be serious. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, don't have, 
Yeah, but listen, uh, listen, Gem, listen. They like to talk about how there's this big club, there's <laughs> Heritage Club called. Cool. You're back in the Europa League now. Please win that because last time you were in it, you lost in the final. Again, Chelsea, we don't celebrate Europa League really like that. But whenever we've dropped down to that level, we've shown we are levels and we won it twice. Liverpool, you lost your last one in that final against who was at Sevilla. Please win this one this season. Please. If you're really nah, that big club, Heritage, win it. Simple as that. They're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna they're heritage, they're man. We proved it by what's happened the last blimmin'. Dude, they, they won't be able to win it. What the M of they got? If it wasn't for Mason Mount, minute. they wouldn't even have those domestic trophies they won over us. Mason Mount missing a wide open goal and missing his wide open pen. Don't start with me. Please don't start with me. I'm gonna get hot. Ben Jacobs has come out of a quick update on Elise. He says, although Crystal Palace aren't happy with Chelsea's approach to Elise, sources CFC CFC sources insist no rules were broken. Palace have not made an official complaint, but did express tapping up concerns to informally to Chelsea. That's it. Basically, nothing's going to happen from that. We'll Hold that. players we are in trouble. Tabolis in the room. And listen, you know what? Palace, you know are in trouble. Tabolis in the room. Listen, I get it. Like Palace are upset. They they've lost a 70, 80 million worth of talent based on this market for like only thirty five million. So I get it. They're upset. But you know what? Take your anger out on Liverpool because they want to get your DM. Charge them. I mean, you guys, you've seen it. They have 150 million right there in their bank. You can charge them as much as you want for Decore. Let them let them pay up as much as they need to, to get that. They're going to overpay for Decore. Do your thing. <laughs> They're going to overpay. They're going to overpay. And I'm going to. Hey, laugh. Chelsea fans in the chat, yeah. handle these Liverpool frauds, please. Anyway, please remind them of their place in life. I've got a dip. Mm -hmm. I've been to shoot 15 minutes ago. It's been a good show as always. I appreciate it. We're waiting for Lavia's medical to be signed off, which should be tonight. Hopefully we get the media presentation and all that from that tonight as well. He should be hopefully Beautiful. training. At least say coming up, we've still got hopefully a goalkeeper tonight. I mean, we are looking as a goalkeeper, so what I've been told as well. So maybe a potential of another goalkeeper. And who knows what else with Chelsea Football Club. All I know is it's been an absolute madness and we should be injecting it in our veins. Liverpool fans. Just it. Just it. Chelsea! Real heritage club in Chelsea Football Club. That's how we roll. Mm. We are a team that is successful and win things on paper and have done for 20, 30 plus years. Mm. And that's why they want to come to this team. Because not only is it just that, I really do think, and I, and I know they talk about, oh, wait, you paid more ways. I also think it's the project in hand. And it's not just the bridge. Moving forward. Bridge. So, yeah. We've got a better project. You probably didn't have no project looking at the way you have performed in the last seven years and they've looked at you going, well, what, what you know, you you know, what's the plan with you guys? And You're on the decline, you, buddy. <laughs> and we, on the other hand, are working our way forward and trying to move forward and become successful again as we always try to because we're Chelsea Football Club. So we move. Guys, big love to you. Uh, forward, nice seeing you, Kelly, Hassan. Big love, guys. Make sure you smash the likes before you leave. I'll be back very soon again, guys. Take Road care. to 10K. Let's go. Road to 10K. Make sure you subscribe as well. Peace. Yeah.